This is part 56 of AngularCRAD tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to display a loading indicator if there is a delay navigating from one route to another route in an Angular application. At the moment, when we navigate to the list route, it takes at least 2 seconds to prefetch the data required for this list route. That's because on this list route, we have a route resolver configured. We configured this route resolver in part 54 of this video series. So here is what we want to do. During the 2 seconds wait time, while the route guard is busy retrieving the data required for the route, we want to display a loading indicator. So the end user knows the application is busy processing his request and he does not end up clicking on the links multiple times, thinking that the application is not doing anything. To implement the loading indicator, we are going to make use of the Angular Router Navigation Events. We discussed these navigation events in our previous video in part 55. These navigation events range from when the navigation starts and ends to many points in between. So here is what we want to do. When the navigation starts, we want to display the loading indicator. And when the navigation ends, we want to hide the loading indicator. To be able to react and execute some code in response to these router navigation events, we need to subscribe to the Angular Router Events Observable. The question that we get at this point is where do we subscribe to the Router Events Observable? Well, if you look at our application, this is our root component, app component, and we have all our routes and the router outlet directive within our app component. This component is always rendered by the browser and depending on the route that is active, the associated component view template is rendered at the location where we have this router outlet directive. Since this component is aware of any route changes, we are going to use this component to subscribe to the router events observable. So the first thing that I am going to do is import angular router, navigation start and navigation end events from the angular router package. So we want to import router, navigation start and navigation end. Next, within our component class, let's include a constructor so we can inject angular router. We don't need this title property anymore, so let's get rid of that. Now let's inject this router into our constructor so we can subscribe to its router events observable. So this is of type router and within the constructor let's subscribe to its events observable. So this dot underscore router dot events dot subscribe. So every time a navigation event is emitted by the Angular router, we are notified of that event because we are subscribed. So let's specify a callback function here so we can execute some code in response to those navigation events. The event that is raised is passed as a parameter to this callback function. I'm going to call it router event. And this is of type event. So let's also import event from the Angular router package. Now we need a property within this component to keep track of when to show and hide the loading indicator. I'm going to call this property show loading indicator and I'm going to set its default value to true. Now in the subscribe callback method, let's check if the router event is navigation start and the way we do that is like this. If router event, that is the parameter that is coming into the subscribe callback method is an instance of navigation start then what do we want to do? We want to set this property show loading indicator to true. On the other hand, if the event that is emitted is navigation end, then we want to turn off the loading indicator. So let's set this property to false. In the view template, we are going to bind to this show loading indicator property to show and hide the loading indicator. First, let's format this code a bit so we don't have all those red squigglies. Now, in the view template, 
let's include a div element and use the ngf structural directive and bind to our show loading indicator property and within the development for now let's display this message loading let's save all these changes and take a quick look at the browser notice now when we navigate to the list route we see this loading message while we are waiting for the data once the data is available the loading message disappears and we see the full list of employees but this loading text message is not that impressive let's display a loading spinner instead we're going to use CSS animations to get the effect of a loading spinner. We need to place the CSS within the app component CSS file. I'll make this CSS available on my blog in case you need it. Notice here we have a CSS class called spinner. So within the HTML, instead of this loading text, let's include that spinner class on the development. Notice now, when we navigate to the list route, we see the spinner while we are waiting for the data. Once the data becomes available, the spinner disappears and we see the full list of employees. At the moment, if you notice, the spinner is spinning anti-clockwise. If you want that to spin clockwise within the CSS, change the rotation from minus 360 degrees to 360 degrees. Similarly, we can also control the spinner color the spinner radius at the moment we have set it to 50% so we have a circle if you don't want a circle change it to something else other than 50 I changed it to 40% similarly we can also control the spinner speed and where you want the spinner to be positioned using top and left properties let's save these changes and see the effect that we have notice now the spinning clockwise instead of anti-clockwise Now, if you're looking for more spinners, there are many websites on the internet that offer free CSS spinners. Loading.io is one such website. So at this path, for slash CSS, notice we have many spinners. Now, to be able to use these spinners on our page, we have to customize them a little. Let's use this spinner. We need this HTML and CSS. First, let's copy and paste the HTML. So instead of this div, let's paste the HTML that we have just copied. Now let's copy the CSS and paste it within our app component CSS file. Now we need to change a few properties here. First of all, we don't need this display property, so let's remove it altogether. And I'm going to change the value of this position property from relative to fixed. Now, if you notice, the background color of the spinner is white. What we want to do is change it to this primary bootstrap color blue. So let's include its color code, which is this one. Let's save our changes and see the effect we get. Notice now the loading indicator is always displayed. That's because at the moment, the div element that displays the loading indicator, we are not binding this div to this show loading indicator property. We'll do that in just a bit. But before that, let's display this loading indicator at the center of the page instead of at this location right here. For that, I'm going to make use of top and left properties. So within our CSS, let's use the top property and set it to 50%. Similarly, let's set the left property also to 50%. Notice now, the loading spinner is displayed in the center of the page. But we don't want this loading spinner to be displayed always. So let's bind this div element that displays the loading spinner to this show loading indicator property. So first, let's format this code. And then let's use the ngf structural directive and bind this div to show loading indicator property. Notice now the loading indicator is not always displayed. It's only displayed when there is a delay when navigating from one route to another route. At the moment, there's a small issue with our loading spinner. First, let's understand what the issue is and we'll discuss how to fix it in just a bit.
Now let's navigate to the create route and make this form dirty. And at this point, when we try to navigate to the list route, we have this confirmation from the route card. Now when we click cancel, navigation cancel event is raised and notice on navigation cancel event, we still have this loading spinner displayed and we don't want that to happen. We want to turn off the spinner when the route navigation is cancelled. So in our component class, just like how we have imported navigation start and navigation end, let's import navigation cancel event as well. And we also want to turn off the spinner when there is an error. So let's also import navigation error event. So all that is left to do is set this property, show loading indicator to false if the router event that is emitted is navigation end, navigation cancel, or navigation error. Finally, let's check for navigation error. Let's save our changes and take a quick look at the browser. Notice now, when we make the form dirty, try to navigate to the list route, we get the confirmation. When we click cancel, we don't have the loading spinner displayed. On the other hand, if we click OK on the confirmation, we have the loading spinner displayed while we are waiting for the data. Showing and hiding loading spinner is easy. Within our root component, we create a boolean property and initialize it with the default value of true. On navigation start event, we set that property to true. On navigation end, error, or cancel, we set that same property to false. And within our view template, we bind the div element that displays the loading spinner to this property show loading indicator. That's it in this video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.